Hi, this is Dave Rudin, and welcome to this week's episode of FCAC Football Weekly. We're coming to you live tonight from Bobby Valentine's in Stanford, and we want to thank our sponsors, Blue Streak Sports Training, Carl Chevrolet, and Innovative Health and Rehabilitation. The West Hill High School football team concluded its best season in 26 years Thanksgiving morning with a resounding 40 to nothing win over rival Stanford. It gave the Vikings a six and five record, their first winning season since 1987, and clinched their first city title since 2007. And we'll be back right after this. I wanna thank our sponsors, Blue Streak Sports Training, Carl Chevrolet, and Innovative Health and Rehabilitation. Hi, this is Dave Rudin, and we're here with the final episode of the year of FCAC Football Weekly, and we're honoring the West Hill football team tonight, finishing up a 6-5 and five record, first winning season since 87. And joining us here on the first spot is the, the person who's helped turn the program around, Coach Frank Marcuccio. And also joining us is his best friend now, the City of Stanford Championship Trophy. Frank, first of all, congratulations. I'm sure it's got to be very satisfying to bring this baby home. Yeah, it was. It was really satisfying. It was a great win on Thursday. Talk a little bit. I know it's been a, a little bit of a week, but just talk a little bit about the win and what it meant beating Stanford and winning the city trophy. Well, I, I told the kids all week it, it was, you know, for two weeks that, you know, we're lucky we get to play for a championship. Not a lot of schools do. Um, on Thanksgiving, it had a lot of meaning. You know, we wanted to have a winning season and win the championship for the city. It meant everything to this program to be able to take that next step. And the kids, you know, they answered the call. Let's backtrack a little bit just for some context. I know the record says 2-8 and eight last year. You were 6-4, and four, you know, through circumstances beyond your control. You had to forfeit four games. Was there a feeling we're six and four and let's go out there again this year and, and prove we're a winning team? Oh, from the start. I mean, from the start, we, we basically said to the kids, look, we know that, you know, people are going to be saying this was a fluke. It was a one season wonder and that kind of stuff. And we were out to, you know, set, it, set the table that, you know, we're a program that is back and is going to be here to stay. And I know this started right from... Uh, the beginning during the off season. I, I know you guys have trained really, really hard right from almost the end of last season to get to the point where you were prepared for this year. Yeah, I mean, we start, you know, traditionally from where I'm from up in the Valley, you always start Thanksgiving as the start of the new year. I mean, we call Valley New Year up there and the kids know that. And we started last season at Thanksgiving. We beat Stanford 20 to six. You know, we got the win to, to get a 6-4 and four on the field, even though the record said 2-8. and eight. And, you know, I, from there on, it was, you know, hard work, and, and we'll, we'll start that again. You know, we did it this year, and we'll start again for next season now. What's it take to turn a program around? Obviously, the team had struggled before you got here. Uh, you know, I think when the team's struggling like that, the kids don't feel about, good about themselves. Maybe some kids don't even want to come out and play for the team. What does it take to rebuild a program? Well, we, you know, I, I've been through this a couple of times, and we recruited the halls. We got the kids out. We got the kids interested. We brought Blue Streak in. We brought some different things in that we wanted to do with the program. Um, and I think that the kids really, you know, responded to it. I mean, we struggled at the beginning of this year. We were one of four. And, you know, we came into t to time, you have to know sometimes when to push a button. And I went in at halftime at a Trumbull game and said, you stink, you're benched, and put the JVs in, and we're five and one since. So I think that the kids realized then that they weren't playing to their potential, and they were just underachieving. And since then, I'll take five and one. That's what I was, my next question was going to be. You went 5-1. and one. Obviously, you had to sort of change the mindset, but tangibly in terms of players, talent, what turned the season around for you? Well, I think it was just that Trumbull game. I think we just hit a low when, you know, the kids realized we just weren't playing good football. We were making too many mental mistakes. We were turning the ball over too much. You know, we had the come-from-behind victory against Trinity, and, you know, we really needed to, to right the ship, and we went up to Bridgeport Central and did that. And then after that, it was just believing in ourselves. And, 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 you know, the Ludlow game was huge. We blocked the extra point, And, you know, we run the clock out for three minutes and seven seconds. And, you know, there's not a lot of teams that can come back from behind one week and then the next week 
have to run the clock out, and we did both, and we've done it a couple of times this year. Where do you go from here now? You, you proved you weren't a one-year wonder. Now you want to prove you're not two-year wonders. I'm sure you feel like you have a solid foundation in place that you can build and grow on so this becomes uh, consistent? Uh, yeah, I, I think that this junior class in particular is a very smart class. They're a very together class. They've carried us uh, a lot this season. We're going to return seven, eight guys with varsity experience on both sides of the ball. You know, we're going to lose our quarterback. That's going to be big shoes to fill. Uh, we're going to lose a couple of receivers. Those are going to be big shoes to fill. But I think we're going to lose, you know, a couple of linebackers. But I think that the core group of kids that we have, we have to be ready to take the next step. I mean, we've gone from, you know, in, inheriting 3-27 and 27 to 12-9 and nine over the last two years on the field. We have to take that next step now. I mean, we're a couple of plays this year away from being 7-4, and four, you know, 8-3. and three. I mean, the Norwalk game, Dante couldn't play because he was suspended from last year's Stanford game. That hurt us. And against McMahon, we were right there, marched down the field with 12 seconds to go. We had the ball at the 12-yard line and threw an interception. Or, otherwise, we win 22-21. So, you know, we're a couple of plays away from, from that getting to that level and i think that's the next step that we have to be able to take well, frank you've done a great job these first two years i know the motto at the school is west hill and proud and with the football team those aren't just words but they're uh it's an actuality right now and uh i know uh, you're very proud of this and uh hopefully you get to bring another one home next year congratulations on a great season and a great job so far thank you i appreciate it i want to thank our sponsors blue streak sports training carl chevrolet and innovative health and rehabilitation. And we're back and joining us right now are two of the leaders of the West Hill football team, Jeff Glover and Evan Scoperanos. Jeff, talk a little bit about what it meant to beat Stanford, uh, 40 to nothing, an impressive win, and to win the city championship. Um, it was great being our city rivals. Um, you gave us bragging rights throughout the year, topped off a great senior season for me, Evan, uh, the two captains, and it gave me this heartwarming feeling that that we really needed. The Kip Harper's good season. Talk a little bit. The team's one and four after five games. What's the mindset of the team right then? Uh, the mindset of the team was that we just need to come out, get a win, and just make sure we dominate our city rivals and and the season on the right note. You guys five and one the last six games. What were the keys to you being so successful? Um, we had, a lot of kids came, were out, came back healthy better than ever including me including the other another captain and came back collected every unit and mind focused ready set to play had to be a pretty good you have to be pretty happy with the year the team had yes i was extremely happy with what the team had a lot of guys stepped up when we really needed it and i was extremely happy with what what we did at the end of the season evan you had two touchdown catches against Stanford and you had a few uh, big catches in some of the tough wins this year. What was it like having a big game against your city rival and to finish with uh, West Hill's first winning season since 87? You know, you always want to go out and do your best. You know, always help your team out, especially when you can score and put points up on the board. But uh, for Stanford High Regards, um, it's an awesome feeling. Like when, once we won that game, you know, words can, we couldn't, words can describe how happy I was. You know, going out there, being your city rival, your last year, your senior season, people will remember that. People will remember, oh, you're that team that uh, won the city championship and won 40 to nothing against that high, and it's, it's awesome. Words can't explain it. Talk a little bit about, you know, you were here two years ago when the program was struggling, and now you've been here for the last two years where the program's been so successful. What's been the turnaround? First of all, what was it like after your sophomore year when the team's struggling? You know, it didn't look too good. You know, one and nine are my freshman year, and then about 0 and 10 our sophomore year and it just looked like everything was going downhill but you know coach Marcuccio came in he was our defensive coordinator our sophomore year and uh, came in and changed all of us you know the attitude changed uh, we were all into it more players came out more hard working the practices were like on target you know um, every, the whole mood of the team changed everyone was excited to play there was no heads down everyone's heads up oh we want to do something about it and you know we were a family and uh, that's what brought us together the most it's got to be a great feeling when you walk around the hallways at school and, you know, you're getting pats on the back, you get a good crowd at the games. It's got to be a very satisfying feeling to 
coming from where you were two years ago to where the program is right now? Absolutely. You know, 0-10 is very hard to go over. And then you come back your senior season and you come 6-5, and which is a winning record. It's just amazing. You know, um, can't ask for anything better, especially from my teammates, my family, my friends, and everyone all together. All right. Well, Jeff, Evan, I know how hard you guys have worked, and I know how happy you are, and uh, we're all happy for you. Congratulations, and enjoy the off season. I want to thank our sponsors, Blue Streak Sports Training, Carl Chevrolet, and Innovative Health and Rehabilitation. Okay, and we're back for our final spot of 2013, and joining us are two more of the stars of the West Hill football team. We have Dennis Hart Lima, and we have Dante Farnioli. Dennis, uh, you're the tackling machine. Uh, talk a little bit about the defense and the job you guys did. Um, the defense was great this year. Whatever, uh, whatever happened, we needed to do, so we got it done. You had 119 tackles this year. I'm pretty good with my math. That's just over 10 a game. Uh, what makes you so good going to the ball? Um, actually. I only played nine games this year, but, yeah, I've just uh, got a lot of speed this summer, worked on it really hard with Blue Streak, and it really paid off. And just flew, flew around to the ball. I guess my math was really off there. So uh, talk, about, talk about what it means to win your first city championship in several years and, more importantly, first winning season in 26 years. Uh, it, was, it was really important that we got this done. Um, to get the winning record, we needed to beat Stanford High, and we kept drilling that into everybody's head that if we want this winning season for the first time, we have to take the city championship with it. So we wanted to beat them more than anything, and we showed that. Dante, I think I got your last name right there. I got hit the G, I hit the N. Uh, you led the team in receptions this year. Talk about uh, First, talk about the Stanford game and how good it felt to win the city championship. Yeah, that was a great win for us. I mean, our goal going into the season was to win a city championship, and uh, to do that for the first time in years was a great feeling. Uh, it gave us a great sense of achievement that uh, it really, we really deserved it. I can say this the first time I've asked this question uh, all year, but you're one of the top return men in the FC Act this year. What does it take to be good on special teams as a return man? When do you decide when you're going to do a fair catch? When do you decide I'm going to gut it out and make the play? How, how does that all work? Well, actually, I couldn't do it all without my special teams coach, uh, Joey DeVillis. He sets with great returns. He's always right by me to tell me if I can I have room or not to catch the ball. And uh, he sets with great returns. My blockers do a great job, like Keontae and uh, Ozas. So it really goes out to them. Okay, last question of the year here. What does it mean for West Hill? Six and five. Uh, Winning season, the trophy behind you, a lot of pride at the school. What does it all mean, and what are you going to remember most about this year? Uh, obviously, the last game is the best memory, but hopefully this whole season is a, is a building block for a whole foundation of a program that will be, uh, it'll be something, something, not something to mess with for years and years in the FCAC. We want to be respectable and something that doesn't happen in years. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the program continue to grow over the next few years. Dennis, Dante, uh, congratulations on a great season. I know you guys are going to have a lot of memories you're going to take uh, into the winter and into the years ahead. And that's our final episode of FCAC Football Weekly for this year. We've had a lot of fun doing this. I want to thank Don Boyle behind the camera there for doing a great job. I want to thank our sponsors again, Blue Streak Sports Training, Carl Chevrolet, and Innovative Health and Rehabilitation for allowing us to do this. We hope you all had as much fun watching this as we had putting it on, and hopefully we'll be back doing this again next fall. Thanks a lot.